Hey review family, keep it I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morse Review Guy and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one I'm going to be covering the new ingested EP entitled Call of the Void. So this is the second EP by the British extreme metal outfit known as Ingested. They've also released one other EP, four studio length albums, one split, and they found themselves on quite a few different fairly high profile extreme metal labels or just heavier labels in general such as Candlelight and Siege of Amida, Unique Leader, Century Media, as well as Grind of Thick Records. Now if you want a the kind of apt description of which one of those fit in the best for them it would be unique leader where this album's found where the band leans more towards that kind of slammy side of brutal death metal they're kind of a very heavy deathcore band but more so focused on the death metal than the metalcore and if it wasn't for the breakdowns in the music it wouldn't have any business being called like core at all not really taking themselves that seriously not really trying to reinvent the wheel very flawless technical production to their music and not really unlike bands such as Alter Beast, such as Within Destruction and Acrania, all of which you can find on this label. And Within Destruction's kind of a really good comparison to this record if you want a band for comparison. I've always just passed by Ingested with cursory listens, and any time I hear them brought up, or any time I've stumbled across some of their work for whatever reason, I will usually feel very kind of eh. I acknowledge the band's talent levels and I think that a lot of the records have a lot of good things going for them from that production standpoint and the fact that they're just kind of hitting you bluntly with these brutal death metal deathcore just bangers but the thing that really has always separated a great record for me and just an air record in this genre is kind of length and proper ideas you don't have to blow me away with abstract ideas and experimentation but at least give me bluntness in a way that's going to keep me interested. And considering pretty much all of their albums except for surpassing the levels of human suffering clock in over the 40 minute mark, it just makes the memorability and the stickiness of these albums just pretty much be non-existent even if it is flashy and just hitting you in waves like a boulder. Which is one of the reasons I think I'm enjoying this little EP so much. The fact it's only four tracks and 17 minutes I think capitalizes on their talents without really going above and beyond or really having to go above and beyond when it comes to a track listing. They're not really having to pad out time. They're not really stuffing this track listing with a lot of the same ideas just executed in tiny different ways to make a 40 minute long album. They don't have time for filler, because if they mess up one part of the record, it's going to drastically impact the enjoyability of the rest of the record. And I feel like for the most part, the band just packs as many punches as they really can with this short track listing. Straight away with Mouth of the Abyss, they just thrust you in full speed. They propel you with absolutely nothing to stop you from just pounding into a wall of fast drumming, technical distorted guitars and vocals that are surprisingly diverse. I liken the shrill shrieks on this record to kind of almost black metal inspired like a lot of deathcore vocals are but they just have this absolutely gut-wrenching feel to them, this despondent feel to them and the growls are so guttural, they're so deep, they're so naturally distorted and disgusting and horrific especially when they slide into some of those brutal death metal growls on this first track that just remind me a little bit of something Travis Ryan of cattle decapitation would do just randomly. I'm very impressed by how on this EP the band is just able to flip on a dime and change up the composition in little ways with linear progressions and these different vocal styles that come together alongside this brutal backing extreme instrumentation to just kind of create these little variations as you progress through these just fast rip roaring roller coaster brutal death metal deathcore bangers. The breakdowns are fairly few and far between this record doesn't just pile them on one right after another which I am very thankful for and surprisingly when they do come in I'm not really that 
put off by them. I don't think they are doing anything that's really off-putting to me, but they can feel a little bit chuggy for the sake of being chuggy and so slow that they're doing nothing and they just feel kind of tacked on in a very tasteless and lifeless manner when they could have done so much more. As well as on the other side of the spectrum, the other side of the flipped coin, I think that some of those just really, really fast parts can feel a little bit mechanical, even though in my heart, obviously, I know they're not as I'm listening. It's just my brain's telling me, wow, this sounds like a machine. Like in the attempt of being punchy, some of that organic feeling is just being sapped out of these compositions. And I can see a lot of people, a lot of detractors, a very technically proficient and very well-produced heavy metal, specifically deathcorn death metal, being off-put and not enjoying this record as much as they possibly could simply because of just how flawless this production is. That being said, track number two and track number three, Eternal Kingdoms, they're really good. Specifically the first part, which is just barely under four minutes long, and it's one of the best tracks that I feel like the band has ever written. It opens up with this just harmonious, surprising guitar melody. And throughout the track, as it's just shifting from heaviness to beauty, it's doing so in a way that I never felt like it was forced. The transitions just felt so like well orchestrated, especially as that kind of extreme metal verse that kind of carries on in the track ends around the 1 minute and 40 second mark and then it goes back into that harmonious guitar playing with echo and reverb that just makes it sound so atmospheric, but it wasn't preparing me for when the guitars and the drums were going to pick back up with these shrill, detached, just tortured vocals, and it just, I know it isn't, but it just gives me such a fucking atmospheric black metal feel to it. I know it's not fast enough, but some of those drums are just played at lightning speed, especially near the first part of this little section of the track, and those guitar melodies just go so melodic and so harmonious, and these vocals steal the show over all of this, riding over this wave of beauty. They just are this beacon of just pain and sorrow. It just reminds me of some of the best black metal, like atmospheric black metal and black gaze singers that just have this natural fear to their voice, this natural dread to their voice, like they're just running from something. Eternal Kingdoms Part 2 is only 2 minutes and 54 seconds. It's completely instrumental and pretty just guitar based. And it's nice, it's atmospheric, especially off the coming off the beauty that was Part 1. I can't help but feel a little bit lesser, like a little bit cheated with this track. And I know cheated isn't really the right word because it's still a beautiful track. But just coming off the high that was Part 1, I wanted it to just follow it up in some epic or cohesive way but this just feels like an interlude, which is fine. And then you have the final track, The Empyrean Creed. It slides in pretty nicely, 5 minutes and 50 seconds. It is the longest track on the EP, and for the most part, I think this is a pretty cut and dry, brutal deathcore track. I like the breakdown near the 2 minute and 40 second mark. The drums aren't doing anything that's going to blow me away, but the guitars, those devilish demonic melodies, I think, come through in spades. They're very nice. You get the normal kind of deathcore refrain, the layered growl. I especially just overall like the way that the growls are mixed with the shrieks at different points. I like the way that Deathcore has a way of layering different vocal structures to kind of create interesting things, and I do admire the band for not just sticking to one specific vocal technique. Overall, it's not really blowing me away, but it's by no means bad. So I think it's pretty obvious. I've had a lot of critiques of this record, but that's kind of my job to nitpick things and talk about what I think is really good and really bad. But for the most part, as much as I'm returning to this EP, each time I'm returning, it's intriguing me. It's keeping me interested, and I am returning to it because it's just a fun listen, and that's something that's pretty fresh for me for an ingested project because I think this record, this EP, capitalizes on the fact that a lot of their other projects can feel long-winded and not really justify their links. I think this EP justifies its length considering it's pretty short. Yes, Mouth of the Abyss and the Empyrean Creed are a little bit straightforward and blunt. Yes, Eternal Kingdoms Part 2 is a little bit half-brained and a little bit weak in the way it's presented, but that's only because Part 1 is so good. For the most part, Mouth of the Abyss and the Empyrean Creed are very focused. They're forceful. They hit you as hard as they can in the head. Eternal Kingdoms Part 1 is one of the best tracks the band has ever recorded, arguably their best, and Part 2 is a really nice, just inner 
interlude. It's a nice cooldown from the epicness that you just got. And I don't think they're trying to reinvent the wheel. If they were trying to be experimental, if they were trying to blow your socks off, I'd call it out. I'd say that they were trying to do that and they were failing. But I don't think that's what they plan to do with this EP. Check this little EP out if you like a lot of the bands on unique leader records that lean more towards the brutal death metal and the brutal death core side, because I think you'll have a lot of fun with it, and it's not that long, so even if you don't like it, it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'm going to be giving this EP a 7 out of 10, and that is a wrap. Please type for the end screen and links and videos that you might be interested in. Have you heard this new ingested EP called The Void? If you have, you can let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to discuss the record with you. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. I'll talk to you guys next time, but until then, my name is Jay Morser, V-Guy, you know who it is, and I'm signing off saying farewell.